Uh, thank you, Chairman. I want to thank all of you for being here today. Uh, I wanted to uh, ask Admiral Neffinger, there, there were some pieces of the reauthorization bill of the FAA that recently passed the Senate, including um, an amendment that I was part of to address insider security threats, as well as uh, an amendment that is focused on uh, the TSA Pre-Check Enhancement Act to ensure that you have, uh, are able to expand that program. Are both of those pieces important to get passed? We're supportive of both of those pieces of legislation. Uh, they codify some things that we're already doing. I think that's important because you want to, you want to ensure that you put good institutional practices in place for the future. So uh, both of those are, 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 are positive for, for TSA. Good. Well, I, I hope that the House will take up the FAA reauthorization. Um, I wanted to uh, ask about, um, Admiral, as you state that they're concentrating on improving TSA protocols, retraining and refocusing the workforce, and driving technological improvements. But one thing that you haven't really mentioned as an existing tool that could do that is the screening partnership program. Uh, where TSA acts as the oversight entity but not the security operator contracting with security companies. Um, and so what I've heard is that there's long waiting lines to get applications approved and that the TSA attitude doesn't seem to be that supportive of this program. Um, particularly as we look at this program, just to use an example in, in Portsmouth at the International Airport at Pease, uh, that is an SPP airport and one of 22 airports nationally in the SPP. Unfortunately, what I've heard from my local airport is that TSA has imposed contracting limitations on PEAS and the security contractor that limit the flexibility of staff at the airport to respond to dynamic needs. Um, so I guess I would like to know, it seems to me uh, when we've seen, for example, the implementation in San Francisco of the SPP partnership, uh, are you interested in also looking at a vibrant screening partnership program? And how does the agency see SPP as a way to th consider reducing lines? Um, so what, what is your view of this, this program? And I do have a follow-up because having looked at what the Inspector General and also the GAO has looked at on this program, I know there's an outstanding issue where TSA has not shared uh, with with the Congress uh, or with, with those who are looking at oversight, the cost estimates so that we can, as policymakers, really compare the SPP programs versus the TSA uh, fully run programs and decide you know, what's the most efficient, effective way to have security at the airports. Well, th thanks, Senator. And, and when, I, when I came into this job, I was very interested in understanding the SPP program better. Uh, as you know, that's a program that uh, an airport can request to um, bring in a private contract screening workforce. That workforce is contracted to the federal government uh, through right. TSA, uh, but they can, they can choose to do so uh, if they like. And, and, and I've been committed to making that as straightforward a process as possible. In fact, we've streamlined significantly the application process over the course of this past year uh, so, that, so that they don't have long waits. The, uh, there's, there, it's governed certainly by the federal acquisition rules, so there's a, there's a certain amount of weight that's required just for the, the announcement, the bid process, and so forth, but we've, we've streamlined that significantly. I, I don't know the problem in Portsmouth, and I, I, I'll look into that for you because I'm, okay. I'm, not, I'm not aware of the specifics well, of that case. I appreciate case. it. Uh, so I will check into that. Uh, I, would, uh, I would hope it's not the case that there's anybody uh, making it more di difficult. Uh, we, we are officially neutral. If, if, a, if an airport wants to go to a private screening contractor, we will work with them to ensure that... So one thing I wanted to, to follow that. up with Ms. Grover on is, as I understand, um, even though Congress has made this request, the TSA has not yet reported cost comparisons between the federal and the private screening and SPP airports to, to us as policymakers. Is that true? At the time of our report, which was in November 2015, that's what we found. I don't know if TSA has taken actions over this past winter, but we did recommend that they should provide regular information to you about the relative costs. To my knowledge, it's not been produced. Has it been, Admiral? Well, we have a deadline at the end of this month to provide to GAO those costs. So we have done that. Uh, it, uh, it now includes the, what are the so-called imputed costs. Uh, the, the, the issue was that we were using just the cost to TSA 
uh, but it didn't include, you know, uh, retirement costs and so forth that the rest of the federal government would pick up. So now the imputed costs are those things that are, that are outside the TSA budget but are still cost to a taxpayer uh, for an employee at TSA. That's the piece that, was, that needed to be added in to give the full, uh, un, the full burden cost of a of Are we employee. doing any comparison on wait lines between the different programs and how, how the, on this issue of management in terms of efficiency between the two programs too? Are we going to get that information? Uh, we have actually done that and, and what we're seeing is comparable uh, across the system. Uh, whether you're um, a private screening workforce or a federal workforce, as long it, it has to do with making sure that the staffing is in place and the staffing um, allocations are, are correct. Uh, but right now we're seeing uh, roughly comparable uh, wait times across the whole system. And, and as I said, really focusing on these, uh, the biggest volume airports has, made a, has been a, a dramatic improvement in our ability to manage uh, lines effectively. Well, I hope with the information being transmitted to GAO that we'll have an opportunity to get see that analysis as well. Thank you.